We are finally live. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God we live. Look here. To God be the glory. Let me give y'all a little insight on insights. I've been watching a little something, something over this PBS channel. Hey, Karen. And um, it's about this sister that just got, well, she ain't just get home. I don't know how old it is. I ain't see the date on it, but um, I'm sure it's not. Obama was in, in office, so, you know, it's it's some years old. It's, it's at least 10 years old, 8 to 10 years old, right? Obama was in office, and, um, yeah, so uh, he had clemency quite a few women who were in prison, wrongfully in prison, in prison because their mates got caught up in either distribution, drug distribution, money laundering or whatever. And because they were the women of these men and, um, and one of them was whose husband was doing a, one of them was a white woman whose husband, he didn't get caught up in drug laund money laundering, it will money laundering, but not drug distribution. <laughs> he got caught up in, uh, doing securities and, yeah, 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 and in, 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 you know, in uh, options and trades and stuff. But she got implemented in his corruption, and she ended up getting more. The women ended up getting damn near more t as much or more time than the men who actually were the criminals <laughs> in this situation. So, sister girl did twenty three years, and her children grew up on their own. And, you know, our son has a little thing, you know, because she wasn't there, you know, but, um, boy, does that sound familiar, huh? Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, he, you know, but she wasn't in his life for 20 some years of his life, you know? <laughs> and I say, man, these people here, hold on. But what killed me, what got me was watching this. I watched it last night, and I, I was watching the, uh, some more of it this morning because you know how it's repeat on PBS, right? So I said, let me, you know, I turned the television on actually to hear the news, the weather, but uh, I turned it on, and this story came on again, and so it was parts, a lot of parts of it that I had not seen, and I was listening, and I was getting ready and all this kind of stuff and going to the meeting and stuff. It, it, it's been on. It's, it's, it's like round robin. It repeats itself. Uh, so... It's been on for a minute, but um, she, uh, she uh, hit them thumbs up for me, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. Would you guys go in and hit those thumbs up? Normally, like, if you on Facebook, so, like, uh, like if you on Facebook, hit them thumbs up. You see that? It's a little X right there. It, it's a little X right there. You're going you're gonna to hit that X, and then it's going to drop down, and then you'll see the thumbs right there. And then you just hit that little thumbs up right there. Bam, baby. Just like that. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, so it's that little X. It's a little X that's going to be right there up underneath your screen. And then hit it. It's going to drop down so it can expose all that. Um, but, yeah, I need you guys to hit those thumbs up for me. Um, anybody watching from a different a venue like uh, LinkedIn, come on over here to uh, YouTube and hit the thumbs up for me, a sister. Hit that like on LinkedIn, though. Hit that like, because I don't know if it registers in or not. I have not seen that. Um, so hit that like for me on LinkedIn if you're watching from LinkedIn. So this sister did 23 years, right? And she her, her sentence got commuted by President Obama. So Obama commuted a lot of black women's pre, um, sentences and white women. He commuted women, period. And let me tell you why. Um, because they were unjustly jailed. The justice system, you know, is 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 corrupt in its in its grand nature. And um, and I'm sitting there saying, man, this sister here did 23. Man, and just think, you know, I was facing 29 nonviolent crimes, life damn sentences. For nonviolent crimes. They want to give me 29. For I'm like, what? And I just stood there like, is this motherfucker for real? The state's attorney came up with 29. 20, and I'm sorry, not 29, I'm sorry, 27. 27, I'm sorry, it was 27. 
but it it really was 29 because I had already done two sitting and during dealing with the court. <laughs> I'd already did two in-house dealing with the court, but transferring back and forth, back and forth, you know. Um, and I think I thought about, and you know, I watched it because I already know what that sister went through. She went through a bunch of damn justice, just unjust corruption in the court system. The state's attorney tried to knock down her uh, clemency, said, com- com- commuting, com- 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 commute. The clemency, I mean, uh, the state's attorney, who happened to be a black woman. I couldn't understand it. I said, we are our own worst damn enemies sometimes. It's sad. Now, here this woman telling you, she said, I can't see why she was abused. I can't see that she was all of this. I can't. You know what? I'm like, you know what? It's people like you that people like them love so much because you're such a butthead against your own people. How can you ain't in that woman household? You don't know if that woman getting abused or not. You don't know that or not. You don't know if it's verbal, physical, mental. It could be, it could have been spiritual. You know what I'm saying? You don't know how a person being abused. If you ain't in their household, how the hell are you going to say what somebody can be or what somebody's going through? This state's attorney act like she was living in this woman's household. And I'll tell you why. She, I said, I'm going to keep it real. She was a pretty lady. A pretty lady. And she looked just like her mama. Her mama was old. And hugged her, let her just, she said, what you crying for? You out now? You home now? What you crying for? <laughs> her mama good was saying, blame her soul, rest in peace. Then her mama died not too long after she got out. And I guess her mama was holding on just for her to come on back out to her children and all, you know, which were grown. You know, uh, it, it just amazes me, though. The point I'm making is that the state's attorney, you know, how we knock each other down instead of trying to build each other up, you know. You busy trying to get a check on your shoulder, you know, on your chill shoulder, whatever. Them little chips. She got all these chips on her shoulder, you know what I'm saying? But you busy trying to get stars and stuff on your chest from your judicial system, which is corrupt as hell as nature. And every damn near 70% of the people that's incarcerated look like your black butt. And a lot of these women are too. And you sitting up here acting like, uh, this sister didn't go through the stuff that she's saying she went through. You can hear the real in her voice. You know, you know, you know, sometimes you can go in court and you can hear the pain in somebody's voice because of what they had to go through. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, y- y'all done seen me sit here and break down crying and everything because of what I had to go through. I know what that sister went through. I know what she went through to stand in front of that judge and for them to tell you that <laughs> they finna give you a life sentence for a nonviolent crime for drug distribution and money laundering. Shit you didn't know nothing about for a gang. It was a gang of people that got arrested. Drug. She wasn't selling. They never got her on camera selling drugs. They got some of the other members on camera. You know how they always put cameras up in the black neighborhood so they can, but they didn't put no cameras up in Beverly. They didn't put no, they had cameras all in the hood. And they, they didn't put no cameras over in Beverly side where the white guy who was selling all the crack cocaine was living. They ain't put no camera over there. And I know them white people over there in Beverly. I know they saw all these black people going to this white boy's house all night long. And let me tell you, I already know they did because I was one of them. <laughs> Shit. See, I ain't got nothing to hide. The hell with that. Hide what? I know they was, I know them white folks over there in Beverly saw all them black folks going to that white boy's house throughout the night. I went to his house throughout the night. You hear cars pulling up all the time. Now, what nobody stupid ass, stupid asshole enough to blow a horn in the middle of the night, like some of these fools do when they come into the hood too, too, at 12 o'clock midnight. They want to blow the damn horn. Like, who the hell are you trying to wake up? 
the, the, ba the neighbor's babies. You know, but it just behooved me how it was a black state's attorney, a female, knocking another female down after she didn't already did 23 years like she was a threat to the community. You know what I'm saying? Ain't even they had a, no violence in her, none. They never even had a record, none. And this sister didn't even have a record. More than what I can say for my damn self. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie. She ain't have her ID. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I stood in front of that judge, I was looking at 27 years. I had already had a record. You know, and they were going off of my past. Didn't even go off of what was actually going on. They was going off of my past. Like, how the hell are you going to keep pulling some shit up that I already did time for? And then you're going to keep pulling it up. You know? You know, and so Obama commuted all of their sentences. You know? And this one woman has a wall because, you know, she's educated. You know, she was intelligent. She was educated and all. She was a lot. You know, she was educated from prison. You know, prison educates you. But what they don't do is that when you in prison and you got life, you're a life, life without parole, without the possibility of parole, when you have that type of sentence, they normally don't let you do um, high education work like learning you won't normally get your degree because they feel it's a waste. Ain't that so? Who the hell are these people? They feel it's a waste to send you to, to school, let you go into to college or, and get and get a degree because you doing a life sentence. What, what good is it going to do? You can't use it. That's how they, that's what they look at. Baby, listen. Okay. Sister girl got out. She looks good. She's a very good looking lady. Her children are adorable. Her mom was the most, utmost adorable. Y'all know I fell in love with her mom, right? Because I'm just, yeah, I done lost my, it's been, so over, it's been 17 years and counting. 17 years since my mom been gone. I still cry. Okay, okay. I still cry. And my dad. I still cry. Ah, oh, this is so good. And I had to take a sip of that just to keep the tears from falling out my eyes then. Because yeah, I know the hell that this woman caught. And for the love of money, you know what I'm saying? Good morning, Tracy. Hey, Karen Dickinson, Kimberly Mixon. What's going on? I'm a mommy, vet, y'all. Everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, Yeah, it just hit me, you know, to talk about this because, like, the unjust of our system, you know, Putin said it best. Our country is BSing us. They are they, this country has incarcerated more people than Russia, China, and anybody has ever incarcerated. There's more peace people in jail. And here's the killer part. The ones with nonviolent crimes, first time offenders, have life sentences. A lot of them have life sentences for, oh, drugs. Oh my God, drugs. Really? Really? And y'all sitting up here with fentanyl? Really? That's another damn thing they need to be doing. They need to be commuting these people's sentences who were cocaine kingpins and, 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 and heroin. Why not? Commute their sentences. How bad can they be? Big Pharma sitting up here putting out all this poison. So how bad can they be? Big Pharma out here putting out all this poison. End of story. They, they know the hell they is. Poisoning all this crap. So how bad can it be? Let them people free. You know, you incarcerating all these people, breaking up all these families. And when you and 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 the main kingpins is the ones that are sitting around here, running around here free, creating more stuff pharmaceutically, as they want to try try to say, you know, to get people up. It's just, it behooves me. 
this the the so-called damn justice system and how what's the justice here how is it justice on our behalf black people latin people latino people how is it justice on our behalf when over when 70 percent of those who are in 70 that's over 50 percent of those who are incarcerated are black really Somebody need to take a look at all these sentences and just clear the board. Nonviolent, clear the board. Free them. If they are in nonviolent uh, positions right now and they're doing time and their crime is nonviolent, especially if it's their first offense, and they already did 10, 20 years, 30, free them. Held them people in there for all this time. And they got all this fentanyl running around. Who the hell else can get fentanyl? But people that's in the pharmaceutical field. Who the hell else can get it? You know, when, when a, and when a regular old street hood gets some fentanyl, they got it from somebody in the industry. <clears throat> Don't tell me nothing. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to the judge. You can lie to everybody else that may not look like me. But baby, I know you got it from somebody out there. And why? Because when I was in that lifestyle, when I was in that lifestyle and them pills, Dilaudids and all of that kind of crap. Y'all done heard about them. Dilaudids and all them type of pills. Y'all know. Who, how they get them? You ain't went into the pharmacy and just said, you know what? Oh, let me see what I want. And what are those over there? The ones with the red the red caps in and the white cap in. What pill is that? Oh, I'll take 10 of those. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't walking into no pharmacy doing that. So you're getting a prescription from who? A doctor. And hold on, wait now. There's people who have gotten prescriptions from doctors they charge the doctor charge then charges your Medicaid or your Medicare for that prescription. They write it for you with refills. And they already know that you don't need that medication. They just write it because that's what you asked for. Oh, and that's what you asked for. Why? Because that's what you went to the to the clinic and paid the doctor to for was that that medication. Oh, oh shit. Am I saying too much? Did I say that? No. What? Yeah. They went to the doctor and asked me how I know. Ask me how I know again. Ask me how I know they went to the doctor and got the doctor to write the prescription for us a medicine, a, 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 a pain pill, the laudits and all that kind of crap that I'm talking about. Y'all know the deal. You went there and got them pills from that doctor because you asked. For, hey, look, doc. Because, you know, you got them doctor offices, the little clinics in the hood, and they there raking. They raping Medicaid, raping it like bend over rover. Here I come, ram, and you ain't no kiss coming behind it. They raping Medicaid and Medicare, Medicaid especially. They raping it, and and Unju and none of them doctors is going to get no time. It, it, but the people did because they got the drugs. But I do know for a fact that them doctors have been writing prescriptions for people that they know don't have nowhere near the ailment that they're writing that prescription for. But they're going to put it in the books and then they file that they do because they're getting extra money out of that. Okay? And I know for a fact they did it. And I know for a fact that they, they doing it. And you ask me how? Hmm. Been there, done that, okay? Been there, done that a couple of times. Not once, a couple of times with different spaces mm -hmm. in different places, okay? I'm just here to let you know. So I felt for this sister. 23 years in, in prison, Obama commuted her, her thing, but then for a black female state's attorney to say with another black sister didn't go through in a household, that just blew me. That just blew me. I was like, really? She gonna try to knock her commute commutation down. Really? And say, oh, she ain't being abused. How you know that woman wasn't being abused in that house? Because, oh, in court, when they when the when the, when her judgment came down, 
she hit her, her she hit her man. She whacked. She co-cocked him. <laughs> Cause she said she didn't believe it. That she was getting ready to get the time. She just couldn't believe it at all that she was even found guilty, let alone getting life without parole. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For a nonviolent crime. Baby, our justice system is totally unjust. I'm just here to let you know. And guess what? We gonna meditate on the justice that needs to take place in this on this planet with our people right now. We gonna we gonna meditate on that. We gonna push all of this crap. We want all these. We gonna meditate on commuting all these sentences for all these unjustly jailed people, women and men alike. I don't, black, white, or light. I don't give a damn what color you is. If it was unjust, it was unjust. It was a white woman on that show with her who was unjust to her. It was the one whose husband was in jail and she went to jail for 20 something, damn near 20 years. So they, herself, her sentence was commuted because her husband was doing things with, um, um, you know, in the finance world. He, uh, what was he doing? Um, not a, it wasn't hedge fund, but it was something else he did. But anyway, she was helping and they met up after this sister got released. They met up and she showed her her wall and her room of all the pictures of everybody and how she's trying to help these women as well who are locked up because of their mates or their spouses who were doing things. You know, a lot of women don't know that what they men are doing. Oh, they know, honey, baby, bye. put me in this house. Let me live. Give me what I need. That's that. I got a nice car. I got a nice house. Food is on the table. This man is taking care of me. And that's it. And they there to be the my household, the mother, the wife, the cat, you know, the lover, the girl, whatever. The man need and the mother as well and raise them children and all the dog walker, the cat stroker and all the rest of that. They there to be all of that. But they don't know what that man doing. That man telling them, oh, I'm getting this, that, those, and other. They might know a little bit. But they don't know the whole gist of what's going on in that man's life. You know, sometimes we keep secrets, okay? Well, them women are unjustly jailed because of what their mates did and because they were implicated with their mates on something that they had no clue of. And they didn't put partake in none of it. But they lived the life from it, and that's why they got them. But that don't, that don't, that, that don't cause for nobody to be in prison. First, a first offense in prison for life with without possibility of parole for real. And when I thought about that, and I saw, I watched her. It brought water in my eyes because I knew what that woman was going through. I went through the same shit. Twenty seven years I'm looking at. Twenty seven years for some old bullshit. Let's get this party started. <laughs> Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. <laughs> I you muted. <laughs> That's my noise. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. We need some meditation this morning, baby. <laughs> you know, it's so um the things that are happening in this world, and I always go back to this, and I know I hope you all don't get bored, is because it all, everything that's happening is in, it's like Caesar. Render unto Caesar, that is Caesar. Caesar has always said, I have the power. Remember Pilate? Um, he said to Pilate, you have no power over me. Right. He was considered the person that was in charge. But Jesus told him, you have no power over me. But Jesus also told the people, render unto Caesar's what is Caesar's. So we are in a, we're in the same situation where whoever has the power, the government, the judges, the state, they're going to rule us. They're going to rule over us. As long as we're entertaining this world by allowing them to have that power. And we give them that power because we don't do our studies and our meditation and understanding the nature of God. So let's go back to, to reality here. The kingdom of God is with them. And that means it's not a place, though. It means it is a spiritual kingdom that manifests to us as what, what we need. So if I go to God and say, God, I need a car. That's not a spiritual um, uh, prayer. If I go to God and say, God, I know you are the owner of everything. You are the only power. You know everything. And you are always present. Just let me feel your presence. Let me be in your presence. Because in your presence is fulfillment. It's abundance. I have come that you might have life 
and have life more abundantly. It wasn't a, it didn't apply to a man. It applied, it applied to the I in me, the I in you. So therefore, we can meditate on this object, but let's meditate on the subject. But let's meditate on the fact that God, I know. See, ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. I know that what is happening in this world can be dissolved by your presence. In your presence is harmony, completeness, and wholeness. So I want to begin our meditation now because I do have to get, leave here at, by 10 or before. So yeah. can we get started? This of course we can. Because okay. <laughs> I got things to do too this Good. morning. And I know yeah. you were fired up about this point that you made. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I've been watching this with this system on, on a PBS and it came on last night. You know, PBS does a roundabout repeat of everything for, for days. Yeah. And um, it came back on again this morning and I was trying to get ready and get out of here and get down to a meeting. And, and it, it just caught my I was like, you know, and I saw part of it last night, um, but I didn't see this part of it. So and it's a nice story. And just to hear her and to hear these other women who also were incarcerated with her. This is like a group of women who all came from this prison called Dublin. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was just amazing to hear how this woman had gotten implicated with her man, um, and got more time down there than her man did almost, but mm -hmm. she, she got time. She got life without parole. And they know she wasn't responsible. They know no, women, they I, men. They know no people. violence, no violence, none of that. No, not a violent crime, none of that. Okay, so going back, going back to any time, they will do that. I was in a court one day where a black guy did a burglary, a white guy did a murder. The black guy got 14 years. The black guy got the white guy got seven years. The black guy got 14 years. That is the way the law works, and it has worked that way towards women, and it will continue. Right now, they're looking at women as if we don't need women. You know, they're finding ways to make babies without, without, you know, with our, our eggs, but yet they're trying to figure out a way that they don't, they don't need us, but they need us. We have to go with them. That's what happened in the biblical days. Women were prayers. We were warriors, but we were warriors in prayer. They want, they trying to incubate babies, <laughs> make incubator yeah. babies. But they still need women. So therefore, right. they're looking at, but they're looking at their power, their might. We have to look at the power and the might of the spirit with them. So as we begin our meditation, let's focus on the fact that I know. And let's let's just get into a deep breathing and let go all this uh, stuff that we were talking about because we want to we don't want to take that stuff into our meditation. We want to actually allow God to take over and let the spirit flow. And the spirit is everywhere. So therefore, the spirit will flow in all directions because it's in all directions. So we're going to do our three deep breaths, okay? One in and hold it, keep holding it. And now let it out. Two. Let it out. Now, what the deep breathing does is move around waste in the body and the gas and the colon. So it's going to move. If it moves, just let it move. Third one, breathe in. Breathe in, hold it. And now let it out. Spirit of God within. I know thy kingdom. Is not of this world. So I turn with them to an empty space, knowing that there is abundance, it's infinite, it's supply. Knowing that the truth will set me free, would make me more aware of the nature of spirituality, of your nature. I turn with them not to solve a problem, but to understand that there are no problems in the kingdom of God. Within me is the kingdom of God. So I shall turn within all throughout the whole day to acknowledge your presence. I want to feel your presence. I want to live in your presence. In your presence is completeness, harmony, abundance, love, 
greatness, peace, and joy. Everything I have need of will manifest as I need it, as I continue to go with him. I bless the people that have been offended. I ask that they lift their eyes up to you. Open their eyes and their minds to know, to knowing the truth that they have you within them. Let me be in your presence. Let me feel your divinity, your love, the invisible, infinite intelligence within me. I bless the whole world with your love. Let thy love come through me and be shared as I daily pause to be in your presence as I daily acknowledge that you are the only power. You are always present and you know everything. I do know when I, I, I look outside of myself, I must render whatever it is to render. The laws of the land, I must respect because punishment comes with the laws of the land. But as I dwell in the secret places of the Most High, the laws of the land does not apply to me. Therefore, I am under the protection of your umbrella. Let me dwell here all the days of my life. Let me understand scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, which is within me, my consciousness, Peace avail, harmony avail, love avail. See yourself now being at peace. Seeing the people you were talking about being at peace, getting repaid for the injustice that was placed upon them. Visualize anyone in your in your life that needs to be repaid for injustice. And needs to live a harmonious life and let everything in the past go. Love them as they are. See only the Spirit of God in them, living as them. Keep your eyes closed and turn with them with feelings this time. Feel the presence and smile at that presence. Feel yourself leaning on the shoulders of this invisible source. Feel the love penetrating through you out into this vast world. Penetrating your soul. The love of God penetrating your soul, your heart, and to others because we are one. Keep your eyes closed. Don't let the thoughts bother you. Let everything go. Speak God. Repeat after me. Speak God. Let me hear your voice. Let me be in your presence. I shall dwell in the place of the Most High. That's my only desire at this moment, is to be in your presence. And let's listen.
Oh, my. <laughs> Wonderful. I have a question. Yes. What do you propose that must be done on the outside, in the outside world to help these people? Or did you have any ideas, uh, something that can be done about it? You know, there's a lot to be done about it. The, 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 the problem is, is the, is the policies that are put in place. Mm -hmm. First of all, the United States has no no level board level level board playing at all across the state across from state to state. Uh, judicially, they don't have any um, like you could you could commit a crime the same crime I commit. You're in Georgia. I'm in Illinois. I'll get eighteen to twenty five years. You'll get twelve. Yeah, what you're saying is each state, each state is like a country of its own. It's, it's, right, it's different. And so they have different rules and different, yeah. They all have right. different laws, exactly. See, if all of the laws, if the laws were aligned, because this is United States of America, right? It is, but? All the laws should align uh, 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 right, succinctly across the whole United States. So that means if you got committed of, of a crime like for theft and it was over $600, the time frame for that shouldn't be, oh, uh, anywhere between seven to 15 years. You're gonna give one person seven, but you're gonna give another person 15 for the same crime. No, well, that's, that's it. That's it. So it's like policies. We, it's, it's definitely policies we have to get into because policy. now, and, and our, our political, yeah. our political cronies, well, see, you go into a you go into a country. We are individual countries, and the government, the governor of my state, is like the president of my state. The governor exactly. of your state is the president, and when they set laws, they set laws according to how they feel yeah. should be applied to their state. So, yeah. in Georgia, you have a, a state that is uh, considered a well. It used to be a Bible Belt state, uh -huh. and they are more lenient, even though it is changing. And because they were more lenient, they figure, hey, we can, uh, we don't have to give as much. But it, it really is just as bad as any other state when it comes to laws, especially yeah. when it towards women and blacks. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm here to tell you, the, the the law is unjust towards people of color. But there's no way they'll be able to manage it across the board. Like each state would never agree upon the same. They would never agree because they're going to keep. You're going to have those who are in position yes. of power that. <laughs> First of all, let's let's take a real good look at our judicial system. It is highly racist. <laughs> okay, first of all, you got people in position in these positions, states attorneys, judges, who are affiliated with um white nationalism. Yeah. That's you know, and so th of course they're not going to lenient up on the 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 time that they allot to somebody for a crime that they did. Either they did it or didn't. Well, and they they were the ones, it on you no matter what. They oh, were the ones, they were the ones that writ, they wrote the law. They have, they were those. They are the ones that have written those laws and have put the penalties on them. You know, it's like okay, it depends on what the judge say. If the judge says he's going to put, you know, give you ten years, then that's his option. If the judge says he's going to give you that, that's his option. They get paid. They shouldn't have options like that, though. That's they that's the point. point. That's they so shouldn't have options. You know. And, Yes, it should be just across the whole board. The Department of Justice, the DOJ, is DOJ for all states. It should be just across the board for all states. A petty crime, three years, two years, three years, two, uh, not even two, three years, a year and a half, a year. <laughs> petty crime under $600 of theft, that shouldn't even be. Uh, a first-time offense, no. They don't. They don't penalize a lot of times. They don't penalize a lot of white people on their first time offenses like Never, that. Hardly, ever. Hardly. And that's even that. Don't, that no matter what state they in. Right. No. So, okay. so justify this. Why would any judge try a child as an adult if, if he's in his right mind? Why? Well, how does a child know? We have to realize that we have human being heirs. Who are in position of power okay that's the first thing we have to realize these are just i guarantee you these be people that went in the bathroom and did something slick or tri twisted or something they didn't did something, something but they should not be in position to make that claim it should be something that the people 
of the of the states of the United States come together and say, okay, this is a just time. This is a just time frame for this kind of case. This is a just. It shouldn't be a sporadic. Oh, seven to fifteen. You got, you're looking at seven to ten. You're looking at seven to ten. You're looking at fifteen to thirty. You, you know, it it, it shouldn't be. They do have a, a policy, an outline of this is this crime has this much time, yeah, seven to ten years. But the judge says, "I'm either going to give you seven or ten. So he does have that choice between the seven and ten years. Right. You no, know, it depends on how angry he were when your case right. was presented, which is ridiculous. You and know? you don't even have to be angry. That girl right. wasn't the angry. Was angry. The judge was angry. You know how right. he, he woke up on a on the wrong side of the bed. His yeah. wife pissed him off. The dog ate his sock, whatever the case may be. Oh, somebody black in the street says something, he just think all oh, niggas is bad. You know what I'm saying? That kind of crap. And so we give power to these human beings who are just as much of an heir as anybody else on the planet. Well, you know, it goes, back, it goes back to that power, Nigga. The yeah. power we give them, the money that they have, and yeah. us, us, us little people, all, all we have, the only thing we have really seriously is God. But are we entertaining that? Most people are entertaining the outside world. Sure, and yeah. that's, why, that's why they're able to control people. Because that's, that's the just why. You know, it's sad. That is, that is just why. And and like you said, it is. It's 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 sad on all on all accounts. It really is. Yeah. Um so there's gonna come a time, there's gonna come a time that hopefully and and it's you know. I can go to fight for it, but I can't fight for it all by myself. It has to be a cumulative. It has to be people all together on the same playing field. We can't have sparse. See, that's what they want. Everybody divided. The division is what keeps us oppressed and suppressed. The, it really is. Yeah, but the main division that cannot take away from our rights is, is God. God. Ability to come together and do our meditations and be on the on one accord, which is yeah. still possible, and we're still working on it. God is revealing yeah. to us both a way to make this happen. So right. I want to know. I love you. I have to go. Maria has a recital today. And I awesome. Uh, I, 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 I will see you next week. And thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Thank you. All right. This was awesome. Have a great You're weekend. Welcome. I will. Thank you. All right. To everybody. To God be the glory. I want you guys to reach back and give back because somebody out there needs your smile. Somebody needs to hear some kind words from you. Somebody might need a bag of chips, a bottle of water, or just an ear to hear. You know, sometimes all we really need is just a person that can really just sit down and just listen. Not judge us, but just listen. And, but, as we get out and get to speaking and talking, then if you ask a question, be receptive of what they are going to answer with. Just be receptive of it. Just receive it. You ain't got to believe. You ain't got to hold on to it with all your might. But, but receive it. Listen to what a person has to say. If they're giving you some suggestions or, or encouragement, you know, or a guide to go by, for your life, if you're having situations and issues, <clears throat> reach out to somebody. Reach out to me. I've been there, done that. I find peace. And I'm so grateful for my peace. And one of the things this young man, the lady I watched who was incarcerated for 23 years, one thing that her son said, he was driving and he said, you know, his, his peace is right now. He really appreciates and respects having peace and peace is everything to him. And he takes drives in his car without the radio, <clears throat> without all of that. He said, because it's just the peace that surpasses all understanding that he is engrossed in and that he loves. And that peace is the peace that holds him together. And for the love of money, that is amazing because I do the same thing. I'll get in my car and I'll just take drives. I don't care the distance. I just drive. People be like, girl, I don't feel like going all the way over there. I'll go, oh, I will wait. That's what a vehicle is for. 
I ain't finna buy a car, pay all this damn money for a car and insurance, license, stickers, and everything else, and just <clears throat> drive it to the grocery store or to church or to the mall to get, you know, or to, you know, or to the gas station. <laughs> drive it to the grocery store, church, and gas station. <laughs> and then go park it. I ain't finna spend all that money for that. I'm gonna use that car. It's a whole hour away. I don't care. That's what my car for. Ooh, that's too far. I don't care. That's what my car for. Now, if I had to take the bus, public transportation, and it's going to take me three hours to get somewhere, I don't think so. Because that doesn't encompass my peace. Because then I'm in the midst of everybody and all their idiosyncrasies and everything else. Sometimes I just need that space, that peace that surpasses all understanding. To God be the glory. Everybody, remember this. If the Spirit has placed it on your heart to do something for somebody, by all means, please, please, please follow your spirit guide. Please follow your spirit guide. It is imperative that you do. It's encouraged that you do. To God be the glory. Everybody, y'all already know this too. God loves you. God loves me. God loves everybody under the tree. So with a big back patty whack, give your God some praise. Cause God has kept us going all of these days. Woo! You better ask somebody. God has kept us going all these days. <clears throat> and recognize God in all your affairs and all your things. And I'm wrong right now. I'm wrong in the eyes of some of my family members. They tell me I'm wrong. I say, okay, so what you want me to do? To be saddened and down and out and walk around with headaches and body aches and all ailments because I should be depressed and sorrowful and, oh, my God, when is this going to happen? Oh, my God. You know, that's they want me to be that way. Oh, because I'm, uh, what? Well, that, you should care. <clears throat> what make you think I don't care? What, how do you measure how I care in the depths of my caring? How do you measure that? That's just like saying how a person mourns. Mm, she's not mourning too well. I wonder why she, why didn't she cry? She must have, why didn't he cry? And why didn't, was shed a cheek? Why did why did why don't you mind your business? If I didn't want to cry right now, I didn't have to cry. And when I want to cry, let me cry. And why you gonna tell me what I should be doing? What you doing? What about what you should be doing? To God be the glory, but let me be the one to tell y'all. Boop! In that order. Love, peace, soul, and hair grease. And that's what I tell them. And if your scalp is itching, please go wash your dirty head before you try to wash mine or try to put some conditioner on mine. Okay, like they say in the Bible, take the plank out your own eye before you try to take the plank out somebody else's eye. Boop! And in that order, you better ask somebody. <laughs> Look, don't play with me. <laughs> you go play with your mammy. Don't play with me. Okay? And then go play with your little brother, little sister. Don't play with me. Okay? Don't judge me. First of all, who are you to try to judge me? Let's let's put let's go into your closet. <laughs> let's pull out some shit out of your closet and see what's going on in here. Let's put the mirror in front of your face and see what y mirror mirror on the wall. <laughs> tell me, tell me what all and all that you have encompassed. What all are you doing? What's in your little bag? <laughs> what's in your little bag of tricks? Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't judge me. I ain't going to judge you. Because I know people go through stuff. I don't give a damn if you white, black, blue, or green. I know people go through things. And, 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 and rightfully so. That's understandable. I have too. But don't judge me because, oh, I should be acting like this. Oh, this should be, you, this, that, this, those, and other. I've done my worrying. I've done my crying. It got me no damn where. So I'm not doing it no more. 
and I'm I'm not wasting my time on oh why they why are they calling me why ain't they contacting me I'm not I left it all in God's hands when I left it in God I, one thing I learned when I left it in God's hands and didn't try to take control of it again I was relieved of the stress and the weight on my shoulders and on my brain and on my heart and on my health. So I don't know how you need to deal with things, but don't try to tell me how to deal with things. I'm not going to tell you how to deal with things, but I will say this. To God be the glory. Pray, pray, and really pray and give it to God. Let go, let go. Let go and give it to God. You're not going to be wrong for doing it. Who cares about what humans are? They're going to talk. They talked about Jesus Christ. They're going to talk about you too. And I talk about you. I talk about you. I talk about every damn body. I even talk about myself. Okay. I laugh at you. I laugh at every damn body. I even laugh at myself. Okay. <laughs> I just want you to know. Sometimes people, I'll be like, what a complete idiot. <laughs> Oh, you just having a complete idiotic time over there all by yourself. Yeah. I talk about people. And then while they over there having their idiotic time, I'm talking about them to myself. I'm like, oh, what a complete fool. Then I turn around and do something just as stupid, too. And I let some people, if they see it, they probably say the same thing. Girl, you just as crazy as a roll. You know what I'm saying? So it don't matter. Just do you. And don't let nobody do you. Do you. Be you. Be unique. Be yourself. And also, another thing, pray. Pray for your fellow man and your fellow and your sister. Pray. Don't, don't be hating. Ah, look at her. She always, I know they hate this. Stop knowing that people hate you. Stop knowing that people don't like you. Stop knowing all. Don't know it. Because when you know it, it's true. If you don't give a rat's ass about it, don't worry about it. Okay. I can care less who tell me I'm involved in all your idiosyncrasy craziness. No, I'm not. And if you want to come to me talking about, uh huh, I heard what you, I heard you had spread said something about me. Oh, okay, really? You heard about it from who? Because <laughs> I ain't one for sitting up there really gossiping. And I listened to it. I didn't heard people because I can't, you know, I, I ain't, I can't run from every damn thing, but. People will start talking, and it might be gossip. I ain't want much for gossiping and saying, girl, but did you see this? Girl, I thought, ooh, did you see what she did? Did you see what he did? I ain't want much for gossip. I frankly wouldn't give a damn. I really wouldn't, and I'm not mean for saying that. And you might think that, but I'm not. I could care less about what all that. I could care less about all that because that shit ain't paying no bills it ain't it ain't feeding me it ain't cloning me it ain't roofing over me you know it ain't doing none of that and you're gonna be right back up in the paper the same people faces the same day it, again it, it, i don't care about all that shit I, let's talk about something conducive let's talk about something like we're gonna help somebody you to come to me and say, Neela, you know what? I got such a, can we help somebody? Let's help somebody. What do we need to do? Do I need to just put them on the show and get exposure for it? I'll do that. It, you know, if it was monetary, if it was, okay, here we go. Talking about monetary. If it was monetary, <laughs> okay, here we go. If it was monetary, I'd do that. But it ain't. And if it is, I'll still try to help you if I can. If I don't have it myself, I can't give you something I don't have. You can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. <laughs> so, to God be the glory, everybody. I pray for each and every one of y'all to have a really good, wholesome life. You know, this, this Friday, it is April the 5th. April the 5th. Today is pizza day. Go have yourself a deep dish pizza. Yeah. Yesterday was burrito day. I had a burrito. I, could I eat the whole thing? No, I couldn't eat the whole thing. But I had one. I gave the whole, I gave, I took like four bites. And that was it. I eat the beans and the rice though. Because y'all know. <laughs> yeah, it had meat in it. It sure did. I am not a, I am not a vegan vegan. I eat eggs, y'all. I eat eggs and sometimes I eat meat. I eat chicken. And today, yesterday, I did have a little bit of beef. This first time I had, I had a beef so long, it ain't funny. But um, I had it yesterday, and I had four bites, four bites, 
and that's it. And I gave the rest of it away. It went because I didn't, that was it. Four bites. But I'm just here to let y'all know. To God be the glory. Hey, <laughs> wellness and Rochelle, y'all. Um, you go stress less. Yeah, stress less. I could care less. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. It's too much going on. So, you know, if I let all this shit fill up on my plate, I ain't got no room for my dessert. <laughs> You better ask somebody. I let all this stuff come on my plate. I ain't going to have no room for dessert. Okay, you know I got to have my sugar. You know I got to have me some dessert, right? Got to have me some sugar, right? To God be the glory. Everybody, remember this. Come Monday morning, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, right here on In My Element with me. <laughs> and maybe co-host Turk. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. He ain't here today. He wasn't here yesterday. He was taking care of stuff. But one thing, I'm here. <laughs> it is in my element with Neela, right? <laughs> Since August 24th of 2020, it's been in my element with Neela, right? So it still is in my element with Neela. So come Monday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, right here on YouTube. Make sure when you come in, hit them damn thumbs up. Oh, well, I got to keep telling y'all hit them damn thumbs up. You know, that's like that. You know, like a bad kid or something. What? Didn't I tell you? Close that refrigerator door. Didn't I tell you? Hit them thumbs up. <laughs> what the hell you waiting on? <laughs> to God be the glory. Y'all listen. I'll see y'all Monday morning, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, right here on In My Element with who? Blase Skippy. Be there. What? <coughs> be square. I'll see you then. Peace out, everybody. <laughs> peace out. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>